Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. So this came up over at, what was, what was the site? Uh, Trollbridge in the forums. I actually got pinged. I got pinged initially on the Discord server for the tavern and asked if I knew anything about it. And then I saw that I was mentioned over in the actual thread itself. Anyone else had their third-party TNT stuff taken off of drive through RPG? All right, the initial poster. I had an email from the admin at drive through RPG saying they were deactivating my pay-what-you-want for Verax GM adventure until WebSphere can discuss new licensing rules with me. Has this happened to anyone else? All had been cordial so far. I'm not complaining. I'm just wondering if anyone else had run into the same situation and maybe and made any progress in getting reinstated. I've emailed WebSphere. I'm waiting to see what they say. As far as I know, uh, I don't believe Andrew got a response. It's not indicated in this thread. These are licenses for folks that don't uh, know what's going on here that were um, done under the F. FBI, the Flying Buffalo banner, when uh, Flying Buffalo was owned by Rick Loomis. Rick Loomis passed a number of years ago, and his estate sold Flying Buffalo and its IP, which would include uh, Tunnels and Trolls, uh, Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes, uh, the Nuclear Assault card game, I guess, amongst other things, to Web Sphere. Uh, at least Web Sphere is also Troll and Toad. They're like a holding company of a bunch of different things. I have heard, since they acquired uh, Flying Buffalo a couple of years ago, I had heard nothing. Nothing until this. And this reminds me a little bit of Gil Gygax yanking the. Uh, was it the uh, the castles and uh, yanking yanking the uh, the uh, contract for, for Castle Zagig for Castles of Crusades back from the trolls upon Gary's death? They had a number of she basically said the ter contracts terminating. I don't know if these contracts were time limited in the first place. Uh, if the new owners are able to terminate these contracts like this. But apparently they are requiring drive through to pull a number of titles down. And now, if you've already bought these titles, you can still find them in your library. It's not like the great removal when uh, Wizards of the Coast pulled all the classic D&D titles like 10 years ago from, uh, from drive through But if you are uh, somebody who's creating third-party content for Tunnels and Trolls, well, I guess it means one of two things. Uh, it means, well, first off, if you have current content, it's likely it's not for sale on drive through You better check your emails. Um, and number two, maybe this means that WebSphere is going to be offering new license terms and new licenses out. Now, for those that don't know, uh, Monsters Monsters, which is... a uh, IP that was retained by Ken St. Andre, which uses a system extremely similar to Tunnels and Trolls, um, has a very uh, liberal, low-cost licensing fee. If you are looking to uh, publish Tunnels and Trolls-like material, you might want to reach out to uh, Steve Crompton or Ken St. Andre ask about their licensing terms. I've actually uh, signed a contract. I do have a project that's in the works. Not, nowhere near ready. Uh, not much work has been done on it yet, but we've got a lot of brainstorming to do. But I do like Tunnels and Trolls. I like the system. Monsters, Monsters is basically Tunnels and Trolls. I'm hoping that this means WebSphere is going to do something with the Tunnels and Trolls system. Usually when people stop start locking down their IP, you generally think it means they're going to do something with it, unless, of course, you're Gail Gygax, which means 
you're locking it down with no intention of doing anything with it, which is what we've also seen. So time will tell, right? Folks, if you know anything about the situation, if you're one of the publishers that have been impacted by this, leave a comment below. If you're a Tiles and Trolls fan, let me know. Tell me what you like about it. I, I like it about it because it works great for solos or with small parties. I think two to three players is ideal. I think it breaks down with larger groups, but maybe your experience is different. Um, have you seen this happen with other game systems? I'd like to hear about that too. So leave a comment below. Tomorrow, today's Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, but it's the last Friday of the month. It's the fifth Friday of the month, which means probably no live stream. Unless there's something special going on, unless some really breaking news happens, in which case I'll probably drag up uh, Bad Mike or one of my other co-hosts. But otherwise, no live stream tomorrow. Next live stream will be Saturday. Myself, my wife, Rach, episode of Gamers Health. So, folks, on that note, be safe, be well, God bless, roll this dice, roll them well. I'll be back again tomorrow with some random gaming shite. All right, folks. God bless. Laters.